So the third part, uh, third thing I'd like to talk about today is just a, a brief update on the test suite, the OSLC test suite, where it's at, what's been going on recently with it, and a little bit about what the um, where we're taking the test suite in the future. I think um, we've talked about it a little bit before in previous uh, webcasts, but the purpose of the test suite and the reports that we have for it in LEO today are to measure implementation compliance, not, and maybe not in the strictest you know, standards-based compliance sense, but you know, make an assessment of the compliance of an OSLC implementation against the core and the different domain specifications. Uh, and really one of the major goals is to improve the quality of an implementation, basically be able to find bugs in it and let developers uh, fi fix those bugs. We found that in developing a lot of these samples and reference implementations that we have in LEO, you know, having the test suite available is a, a great way to you know, figure out where you're at, what you need to fix, and sort of accelerate uh, the pace of your development by having these tests. Uh, I'm sure some folks have heard about test-driven development. Let's pick a test case that fails today, get it working, then move on to the next one. So. It, it, it's one approach to developing some of these um, providers. The initial focus has been on must items in the spec, uh, and then we're going to follow it up with coverage of the should and the may items. And we do have reports available. Um, take some customization. There is a Word document out there that, that talks about how to, how to get the reports up and running. Um, but when you have them running, they do provide both summary and detailed results. You can also work from just the JUnit results in um, in the Eclipse workspace. So all of the tests today are based on JUnit. Um, they use the JUnit framework in Eclipse. And uh, you, know, you can just work off of the, the JUnit output that shows up in Eclipse, the passes and fails, rerun particular tests, things like that. So today we have coverage of um, change management has been out there since we originally contributed the test suite, the asset and quality management specs. We added coverage of them uh, over the over the summer, and we do have um, initial coverage for requirements management that was added uh, about a month and a half ago. So we are expanding sort of the breadth of the test suite, the, the domains that it covers, and we're trying to um, ex improve the the depth of them as well, going deeper into each of the specs. Uh, we did do some refactoring. Um, over the past month and a half of the test suites to improve um, reuse of common code. There was a lot of copied code that was you know, being shuffled around each time a new domain was added. So we've taken a step back and added that to a common place. We've been able to isolate some of the domain tests from the core tests so that you know, if, if you want to come up with your own OSLC provider that doesn't implement one of the existing domains, you can at least run, that, run the core tests against that and see how well it does um, against those types of requirements versus testing specific artifacts from one of the domains. Um, and there's also been, been some recent improvements for running reports. Uh, so there, there was a good comment on the, um, recently on the Leo Dev mailing list uh, from someone who basically the test suite development up to today has sort of been sort of continuous development. There, we haven't really tagged or marked any stable milestones in the test suite, and I definitely think that's something we need to start doing. So um, I think that person's going to open an enhancement request so that you know people can rely on a certain level of, of the tests as opposed to having them continuously developed and changed. So I think that's part of our you know 1.0 or, or shortly post 1.0 effort is to uh, maybe make the test suites a little more mature in terms of having folks be able to reliably consume certain levels of them. Um, these test suites are being used um, by several different organizations um, to do assessment of their provider implementations. Um, you know, I know personally I'm, I'm with IBM. I know several groups inside of IBM that are using it, but also outside of IBM we've um, been contacted by you know, quite a few folks that, have, that are using the test suites productively today. Some areas for enhancement that we're looking at doing, um, hopefully later this year or early next year, are to be able to drive the test. Right now, the tests aren't really driven by 
information that the service provider exposes. So, you know, ideally we would look at a service provider's service document, look at the resource shapes that it has, and then dynamically decide which tests to run based on that information, or, or perhaps based on an XML file that contained that same information. It wouldn't necessarily have to come live off the, the provider itself, but having the tests more driven by what the service provider advertises as its capabilities, instead of us having to say, well, such and such service provider doesn't do that, so ignore these failed tests. That's, that's not an optimal way to look at reports. We want to be able to trust the service provider and test based on what it says it can do. Um, we want to add some OAuth tests. We do have some that are in the process of being ready for contribution, uh, so hope to have those out there. And we'd also like to use, have the tests themselves, they, they predate OSLC for J, but have them use OSLC for J where it makes sense, not necessarily for the low level tests where we're you know, checking HTTP status codes and things like that, but some of the higher level tests where we're making sure that particular attributes are being put on a resource, OSLC4J would be very useful there uh, in the test suites.